Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. And I'm so happy to be here today with Karen Hewitt. We have talked before, and now I'm looking forward to catching up and doing it again. So hi, Karen, and welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, it's always good to be talking to other sensitive people, I find, because things always turn out to be interesting and meaningful and not all that small talk. So let's just dive in. So would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. So I'm an introvert. Mm. And also a H HSP, I'm a highly sensitive person. Mm -hmm. I consider myself empathic. Mm. And I started on the online space, just doing businesses and trying to work and trying to contribute to my family mm -hmm. like eight years ago. Mm. And it came this point where you decide, oh, I want to level up. I want to do more. I want to be more. I want to be more successful. Mm -hmm. So I did what everyone said and I hired coaches. Oh, yes. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they say shortcut, hire someone who can help you get there faster, teach yeah. you the ropes. And you know what? Every single one of them told me mm -hmm. yeah. stop being you and start being more extroverted. Okay. Be out there more, do more. Like, oh my gosh, no, you need to be loud. And no, you need to be on stages. No, you need to be in videos. No, you need to be doing this. And so for the first several months, I tried. Yeah. I seriously tried. And then I dealt with burnout. Yeah. And if you didn't know that there is this real thing that's introverted burnout or, you know, mm -hmm. sensitive person burnout, where we feel overwhelmed by everything going on in our lives and we keep pushing and keep pushing. And by yeah. the end of it, it's not like, oh, I need a little break. It's like, oh, screw this. I'm done. I'm going <laughs> to my room. You will not see me for three weeks. Yes. And you completely shut down. Yeah. And, and that's when I was like, this cannot be how mm -hmm. life is supposed to be I'm not yes I wanted to work for myself yes I wanted yeah. my own business yes I wanted to set my own hours and have the freedom and not have to deal with the drama mm. but I didn't want to be exhausted all the time no mm -mm. and that's what everyone was telling me was how you had to do it and yeah. you've probably had people tell you oh you are not you you work if you're your own business oh now you need to be more extroverted yeah you need to get out there more Yes. Got to be visible. Got to be loud. You got to post every day on Facebook. You have to message people, tell them how amazing your product is. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's exhausting. Yeah. And then you put that with, you know, I'm a mom of five kids mm -hmm. and we homeschool. And then I've got a house to take care of, business yeah. to take care of, kids to take care of, nonprofits yeah. to take care of. And I'm like, Okay, so where does this come from? Where do I give in order to do everything? Yeah. And that's when I realized there had to be something out there that was different and better. Mm. So I started to learn about neuro-linguistic programming, Ooh. which is a, a scientific technique mm -hmm. with how you retrain your brain to see certain things, mm. overcome certain obstacles become you can use it in sales and advertising ways to attract people but what I used it for was to really dig down to the core of introverts and sensitive people mm. and discover what their strengths were rather than their weaknesses mm. because what was happening was every weakness was being told to make a strength yeah no, 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 no. Let's go with your strengths, lean into them, and make yeah. them stronger. Mm. So that's what I was trying to do is let's take these strengths. Let's take these things that make introverts and highly sensitive people so powerful. Yeah. And let's grow from there instead yeah. of like, oh, no. Like you said, be more visible. Mm. You no, know, some days I don't want to be visible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and and I think, as you said, it just leads to burnout. For one, if we keep pushing and forcing and trying to do all the things just because we're supposed to do them, but I also believe that it won't 
it won't work if it doesn't come from a place of who we actually are if it's not aligned with our mission and and our sort of energy in the world what it is that we want to do so I really like what you're saying about strength. That's what I like to do here, finding the sensitive superpowers, because I so agree that we have so many qualities that, yeah, let's lean into them instead of finding the worst parts of ourselves and then hammering away on them until they become almost, you know, normal or whatever. So tell us a bit more. Mm. I did the extroverted thing and I was very successful. All right. I was. I did all the things they told me to do mm-hmm. and I found success. Mm. Yeah. But I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm. I was anxious, snippy. I was a grouch all the time. I gained a ton of weight. I was miserable. Mm -hmm. I was successful. I was very (laughs) unhappy. Yeah. And not just like, oh, I don't feel good today. It was no, Mm. I was miserable at a core. So introverts are capable. We're capable of doing all these extroverted things. Well, we've been practicing all our lives, haven't we? Living up to what was expected of us. Yeah. But but it leads to this whole thing where you're not happy and you're miserable and you're just stressed out yeah and then your body just goes no we've had enough and your body shuts down Mm, yeah and so like i said i talk now to introverts encouraging them no you don't have to be someone you're not you just have to be the best version of yourself Mm. and that is how you'll find your success yeah, because having those boundaries in place, having those systems in place, having that acknowledgement of where your strengths are, where your passions are, mm. and working from that place, yeah. you're going to be successful. You are, but you're not going to have the soul burnout. You're not going to have the body collapsing on you. You're not going to have the misery. You're not going to have the grumpies. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to have the stress level where you're screaming and yelling at everyone all day long. That's not a great place to be. I unfortunately remember that all too well. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, I like your version a lot better of having having a life that we enjoy waking up to in the morning, right? And you see, the thing is, I believe there is a place in the world for those that are extroverted and Absolutely. they're very strong in those areas. This is mm-hmm. area where introverts are very powerful and, you know, sensitive people. Like, for example, I tell my, my introverts that I help that your sense of organization is actually a superpower. Yeah. A lot of extroverts are those that are outgoing. They have this, and I'm sorry about my kids in the background. Of course, they're just chittering and chattering, and they know I'm on a recording, but this is the moment they decide that they need to have conversations with each other. Yes. <laughs> if they were teenagers, they would be horrified with, by the thought of being recorded and put out there. Oh, my kids, they they just evaporate if I do anything yeah. that's recorded. So. No, mo- mine are 12 and under. Yeah. So it's like, oh, Different. mom needs quiet. Yeah. We're going to ask every question in the world right now, even if it has no bearing on anything we're doing. Yeah. But as I was saying, like an introvert superpower is being organized. Mm. I find a lot of extroverts or people who are not highly sensitive, they tend to do things very spontaneously. Yeah. And that that spontaneous is fantastic. It is an amazing gift. Can it is be. wonderful. Yes. Mm-hmm. But that quiet organization and planning that someone mm. who's a hate, you know, a highly sensitive person or an introvert does allows them to map everything out, yeah. come up with outcomes and potentials mm. and thought processes and what could happen if I do this, what could happen yeah. if I do that, and allows them to have that dedicated plan, yeah. which that in itself is how you launch businesses. That in yourself is how you create environments at work that everyone thrives in that is how you create family moments where okay no we're going to do this we're going to build and that is fantastic it 
I've talked to extroverts who've done sales launches and like, no, we just decided we're going to do it and running. It was really successful. And then I spend the next three weeks playing catch up to get everything done, but it was great. And I thrived on it and I loved it. And it was invigorating and powerful. And I just felt alive. And you gave that same scenario where an introvert or highly sensitive person would just do a launch and then just like go with it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. That three weeks afterwards playing catch up would about undo them. (laughs) <laughs> and like, what did I do? What? Why? Oh my gosh! No, I have to do this and I have to yeah. do that. But you take the three weeks that the extrovert's playing catch up mm. and put it in front of the launch, yeah. and the introvert has email systems, messaging systems, programs, worksheets. Yeah. Everything's already set up, and it's like, oh, I launched. Click mm. button. Yeah. Click button. <laughs> click the button <laughs> and that stress level disappears both ways are completely okay yeah whatever works both ways, right both yeah. ways work but a lot of people for business are teaching this okay just I want you to run with it and we're going to launch you're going to play a deadline and we're going to make this happen and it's going to be exciting and thrilling and mm. and someone who's a little more sensitive someone who's an empath someone who's introverted that is the most stressful situation to put them in oh yeah let's go okay so how do we map this out Mm. how do we plan how do we put systems in place what do we do next yeah and that's what I do is I help those that are introverted come up with alternative plans Mm. so they don't have that negative energy they don't have that stress that spiraling sense and yeah. have you ever felt that spiraling sensation when you're being pushed into something and it's having to happen here and there and it's just like <sighs> i've gotten very good at staying away from those things because i've been on that particular merry-go-round <laughs> in the past like, no no thank you i kind of <laughs> developed a, an allergic reaction to <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because I think one of the things that we are really good at is that we we know ourselves once we stop believing that we are wrong and, and constantly trying to fix ourselves. Once we sort of embrace who we are, we know exactly what works for us if we are just paying even the tiniest bit of attention. We can so easily feel when we are out of alignment, when we're pushing too much or trying to run too fast or when things get too spontaneous and up in the air, I, I think we're very good at, at picking up on that. So if we honor it and, and put some of those systems in place that you're talking about. I think the real key here though is setting the boundaries. Mm. You have to set a boundaries for your emotional well-being. You have to set boundaries for your time well-being. Yeah. You have to set boundaries for how you interact with other people. Hmm. and when I put the word boundaries out there people go oh oh my you know you're putting a wall up you're putting this negative thing up you know it's crazy like all this kind of stuff Hmm. it's not I want to twist this whole idea of boundaries and turn it into this is a way that you can provide yourself with love yeah to grow and Hmm. it's also it is how you tell other people hey you're going to get the best from me if you treat me this way Hmm. rather than, Oh no, no, I don't do that. Yeah. This is, Hey, I want to work with you and I want to be the best way possible. If we work together like this, we're going to get the best of everything. Hmm. So, but boundaries are a key thing. Hmm. Yeah. And, and I like, you know, setting them in, in the right way, not just like a, no, I'm not going to do that, but sort of explaining it or, or showing that I would like to do that. I just want to do or need to do it this way. So, yeah. Yeah. And boundaries don't have to be harsh. They can just be, oh, I understand that you want my time right now. Mm. I have three other things I need to take care of. Can I schedule you for this time? I want to give you my full attention when we talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I respect you so much that I need to understand that I'm doing the best by you. So how about we take this and do this Friday at two? Let's have yeah. coffee. Yeah. And that is a highly sensitive person as a, as a 
person that is, you know, introverted, someone who has to protect their energy, mm. that allows you to plan things out and do things on your schedule without having other people get, oh my gosh, why don't you have time for me? Why can't you work with me? That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yes. And and I think that's one of another one of our superpowers that we have that sense of making sure that the other person isn't feeling rejected, that we can actually be nice about it and, and say things in a decent way that that, as you say, make the other person feel that we do want to do our best by them, that we want to actually be present. So that's why it's better to wait a couple of days than do it right now while there's a million other things taking our attention. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's just it, boundaries are not a bad thing. And mm. anyone who is sensitive, anyone that is an empath, the thing is you have to protect your core. Yeah. You've got this core self and this core mm. self is that moment and I just want you to everyone to think when was that moment that you felt most at peace mm. you felt the calmest you felt the most genuinely authentically you and there's this there's this moment we all have it mm. and when we go back to that moment that is your core alignment that is yeah. where you're supposed to be operating from and yeah. the problem is and the problem is that we have so many people turning around and trying to pull us out of our core that yeah. it stresses us. And then we're like, no, I can't be in my core because it's not allowed to be because everyone else is pulling me from this and it cascades. Yeah. Mm. So something I tell everyone to do is you've got to find that core. I mean, when I was explaining it, I, I saw your face. You kind of went there, didn't you? You kind of went to that core spot. <laughs> yeah. Just for yeah. a moment, it was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you have it on your calendar to go to that course place every day? It's it's one of the first things I do in the morning. I meditate and I journal because it yeah. is such foundational thing to to have that inner connection and never get too far away from it. I find, yeah. You realize how many people don't put that on time. They, they'll mm. put their work schedule on the calendar. They'll put their yeah. school schedule on the calendar. They'll put their kids' yeah. schedule on the calendar. Yeah, yeah. They'll put doctor's appointments on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Everything that they have to be here, do there, go yeah. there. Where, what about you? Yep. You are just as important. And I love that you meditate and journal. And that is an assigned place on your calendar. Mm. And I want to encourage everyone. Even if yeah. it's for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. All I'm going to do is five minutes where I go back to my aligned core. Mm. It needs to go on your calendar. It needs to go there because that is how the more often you go there and it's like muscle memory. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Because if you find that if something happens and you don't meditate, you don't spend that five minutes on yourself, the next day it's harder to get back there. Yeah. But if for some reason you're having a rough day and you do it two or three times, mm. the next day is like, oh, I'm right back there already. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, peace. Yes. It feels good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Being able to recognize it and, and find our way back to it. I think for some people it's walking in nature or listening to music or gardening or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be, you know, um, sort of traditional meditation or anything whatever it is and then as you say prioritize it because there really isn't anything more important because to me that is my source of energy is where I go to recharge so yeah it's like when my phone's running low I plug it in I have to do that too and on a regular basis as you say and so many people forget to plug themselves in yeah. And it's not like we're trying to put a lot of people like think it's plugging themselves into the world. No, it's into yourself. Yes. Yeah. Take that moment to find out where you're at at this moment. How do you feel? What is mm. going on? And if you're overwhelmed, I always tell people brain dump, get a pen and paper. Just doesn't matter how ridiculous it sounds. Yeah. It doesn't matter how unorganized, how chaotic mm -hmm. or Every single thought, just write it down. Just write it, just write it, just write it, just write it, just write it. And just put it on paper because, you know, once it's on paper, you can sort it out later. Yeah. Yes. And that the brain can relax. Yeah, the brain can relax. 
<laughs> I just love the commentary from my children. Yeah. <laughs> they're, such, they're such blessings and they keep me on my toes and they're definitely not introverted most of the time. They're very extroverted. Yeah. So they take the energy and you have to just go, a moment, please. <laughs> I, I bet you're really good at finding your sort of inner, <laughs> inner place. You have to be right in, in the middle oh, yeah. of all that. That yeah. really... Mm -hmm. And that is a question I get a lot is like, how do I find that when so much is going on? Mm. And it's like, they just take a moment and breathe. And the more you do it, the more you meditate, the more you journal, the more you do those moments where you connect yourself, you can yeah. be in the middle of complete chaos mm -hmm. and just, okay, I'm back. Yeah, and it, it becomes that quick snap you can just snap back into it yeah. if you know how it feels and how mm. what it takes for you to get there so yeah. I'm going to encourage everyone find that journey find that path and like I said it can be gardening it can be painting it could be mm. singing yeah. terribly in the shower yes <laughs> <laughs> it is it yeah. is so individualized and it's what yeah. is that moment for you mm -hmm. And once you have that, it's just, mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Then you can be podcasting in the middle of kids and, and everything and still, you know, keep it together. I mean, if that's not proof enough, I don't know what mom could, could need more than that. I mean, ah, yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, because that's very, very practical advice. I like that. That's something we can actually decide to go and do every day, not just for ourselves, but for our surroundings as well. And, and I think the better we are, the more balanced, the more aligned we are, the better for everybody, and including sort of the big picture. So... So if we're ending on that note, what would you like to be your legacy for the future? My legacy for the future is mm. my focus is introverts, which, yes, yeah. I would say 90% of introverts are highly sensitive people. Yeah, yeah. I they think really there's a big are. overlap. Absolutely. There is a huge mm. overlap. And the reason I went down this path is I was really tired. Hmm. being told not good enough not yeah. doing enough not worthy not capable you know mm -hmm. all those negative bombardments yeah actually no you're perfectly capable you're perfectly worthy you're perfectly beautifully balanced and amazing mm. and phenomenal and I just want to celebrate and my legacy is I want introverts or highly sensitive people to just see how great they are how amazing how impactful because yeah. i have this belief that we need both the introvert and the extrovert we need both That's sides right. of the coin to make the world turn yeah. and for some reason the world is telling introverts that they can't no you yeah. can yes so i can leave anything with my legacy is i want introverts to take back their personal power to mm. step into the best version of themselves not of what someone else tells them to be not of what someone else encourages themselves because yeah. that is the person the world needs mm. and they'll never know how they can impact something or someone or some method or some system unless they're willing to be a hundred percent authentic absolutely and i want them to have that power that is why i want my legacy that i can help someone have that power to be themselves mm. the world needs them Yes. Yes. I like that very much. And I hope our conversation here today has contributed that there's someone listening who's like, yeah, she's so right. I get to be me. I get to do life my way. I even get to do business my way without having to, you know, contort yourself into some kind of mold that doesn't fit at all. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yes.
it has i have enjoyed it very much and now your kid's gone quiet <laughs> i told you the minute i need to speak they like to be loud and the minute i'm like okay now this is all wrapping up and you'll be silent for the next three hours and you'll be like, really? <laughs> you couldn't yes. do that before no well i mean that's life isn't it and when we find our our happy and aligned place we can handle that as well so yeah. So I all the moms you're... out there, just because yes. you have kids running around crazy, does not mean that you can't make a difference. Point proven right here. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. And I hope you and your kids have a great day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, Bye for now.